Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in San Diego. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Monday, March 4th. Coming up on today's show, we'll get into the surf report and the weather outlook, then we'll jump into some local news and a few interesting happenings in business, tech, and science. But first, you'll be interested to know, today is National Sun's Day. National Sun's Day prompts reflection on our role as parents. It's a time to listen to our boys, understanding their dreams, fears, and views on changing the world. Everyone has a role in this endeavor, including men, women, educators, and professionals across all levels. So today, I hope you have some great memories that you can bring to the top of your mind and relive them as if they were yesterday. And now it's time for the surf report. This week, expect a cleaner surf with a diminishing west-northwest swell mixing with a modest south-southwest. Weights will range from waist to head high with occasional overhead sets at favored spots. Mornings will see light to offshore wind, shifting to a gentle onshore breeze by the afternoon. Conditions will slightly decrease into Tuesday. By Wednesday and onwards, anticipate smaller and cleaner surf in the mornings. As a blend of west-northwest to northwest swells is forecasted for the latter half of the week, with surf mostly in the knee to waist-high range, reaching chest-high at winter focal points. Monday at Tourmaline and South San Diego, you're in luck. It's looking clean at two to four feet for only three hours from seven to 10 a.m. with a two foot outgoing mid tide and onshore wind at two to six mile per hour. After that, there might not be another rideable wave until Wednesday, but we'll keep an eye out for you. Best time to ride is at 7 a.m. when the southwest swell is two feet at 16 seconds. Get yourself a couple little nugs before the chop rolls in. The first low tide Monday will be zero feet at 11.30 a.m. with a three foot high tide just before 8 p.m. The nearshore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 62 degrees for the water temperature. Checking out the weather in the San Diego area. This morning, it's cloudy and 57 degrees with six mile per hour wind. The sunset will take place at 5.48 p.m. and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.10 a.m. It looks like we're in for a mostly sunny day with a high near 62 and west wind of 5 to 10 mile per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a low around 49. Looking ahead in the weather, We'll see partly sunny skies on Tuesday, transitioning to mostly cloudy nights with lows around 51. A chance of rain emerges Wednesday with highs near 63. By Thursday, skies clear to mostly sunny with a high near 62. The week rounds off with a sunny Friday, reaching highs near 66. Bonjour, food enthusiasts. This podcast is brought to you by Versailles Cafe and Pastries in Encinitas. Nestled on El Camino Real South, just north of Encinitas Boulevard, this cafe is a haven for culinary delights. Indulge in their amazing Eggs Benedict or their gluten-free crepes. You can grab a panini for lunch or just breeze on through to get your morning coffee. They are open every day from eight to five. So stop on by and don't forget to tell them. Sunny morning send you. In local news, Grace Potter, the acclaimed singer-songwriter, is set to perform at The Sound in Del Mar on March 16th. Previously scheduled to play in San Diego in March 2020, her show was canceled due to the pandemic. Despite the cancellation, Potter visited Del Mar with her family camping by the beach in the same car used for her cross-country journeys. These trips inspired her fifth solo album, Mother Road, reflecting on themes of regret, depression, grief, and loss. Potter's latest work includes Grammy nominations and songs that serve as a raw memoir, offering listeners a glimpse into her emotional journey. 
Her music, featuring a blend of roadhouse rock, honky-tonk country, and barren blues, showcases her distinctive raspy vocals. Mother Road sound is described as less intentional and more inspirational, aiming for originality rather than chasing a specific sound. In addition to her tour, Potter will perform at Mavis Staples' 85th birthday celebration, alongside artists like Jackson Brown and Nora Jones. Potter's focus on Mother Road signifies a commitment to authenticity, embracing the good, the bad, and the ugly of her experiences. Tickets for her show at The Sound in Delmar with opener Brittany Spencer are available for purchase, marking a significant return to live performances. Now on to sports. Number three UConn wins its first outright Big East regular season title in 25 years. The Huskies, defending men's national champions, hadn't won the Big East in 18 years. Donovan Klingon led with 19 points and 11 rebounds in a 91-61 victory over Seton Hall. The win marked UConn's undefeated home record this season, 16-0. Coach Dan Hurley highlighted the challenge of maintaining excellence in a tough league. Freshman Stefan Castle scored 21 points, tying his career high. UConn outperformed Seton Hall in several areas, including a 56% shooting accuracy. The Huskies' defense, especially after Klingon's return from injury, was pivotal. Seton Hall remains fourth in the Big East, still hoping for an NC AA tournament berth. Last night in the NBA, the Clippers and Timberwolves had an offensive power outage, but the Clippers came away with the win, 89 to 88. Sounds boring. Tonight, the Clippers are on the road to take on the Bucks, and the Lakers are at home playing the Thunder. In national hockey last night, the Ducks lost to the Canucks, two to one. In top news, our brains are wired to ignore familiar stimuli, a process known as habituation. This neurological process helps us adapt quickly to our environment, focusing on new or changing elements. However, habituation can make us overlook both positive changes and societal issues, like racism or environmental pollution. Tali Sherrod explains that dishabituation can enhance happiness, creativity, and initiate social change. For instance, repeated exposure to misinformation can dull our response, making us more likely to accept falsehoods. Sherrod's research shows that repeated lying diminishes the amygdala's response over time, reducing the emotional impact of dishonesty. Exposure to social media and constant images of crises can also desensitize us, making extreme discourse seem normal. People habituate to pollution levels, with studies showing that those in smoggy areas are less likely to perceive air quality issues. Overcoming habituation involves introducing variability into our lives, like learning new skills or taking breaks from familiar environments. Short breaks or diversifying experiences can renew our appreciation for ongoing pleasures and improve overall enjoyment. To combat habituation to global issues like climate change, reliance on data over personal perception is crucial. Addressing societal biases requires making disparities visible and promoting accountability to encourage change. Awareness of our tendency to habituate can inspire us to seek new experiences and challenge societal norms. In business news, Bitcoin's next halving event is set for April 19th, marking a significant moment in its supply mechanism. This halving is unique due to a mix of factors affecting both supply and demand for Bitcoin. The Bitcoin blockchain's design includes having the mining reward approximately every four years. This process continues until the maximum supply of 21 million Bitcoins is reached. Historically, Bitcoin's price tends to appreciate following these halving events. 
The upcoming event coincides with increased institutional interest and the approval of Bitcoin exchange trade funds. Bitcoin's recent rally brought its value close to the all-time high set in November 2021. This year's performance deviates from the norm, with significant gains leading up to the halving. Bitcoin's blockchain security is at an all-time high, potentially mitigating concerns post-halving. However, Bitcoin's price remains susceptible to macroeconomic uncertainties and potential corrections. In crypto movement, Bitcoin is currently over $63,000 after another pop. Ethereum is over $3,400. And Solana is $129. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the San Diego area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach, cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class with locations in Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, La Jolla, and more. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now, back to the show. Let's talk science. Three new moons have been discovered in the outer solar system, enhancing our cosmic neighborhood. One moon orbits Uranus, and the other two circle Neptune making these ice giants a bit more crowded. The largest of these newly found moons measures just 15 miles across, showcasing the scale of space. These discoveries were made possible by advanced imaging techniques and years of observation. Uranus and Neptune's moon counts now stand at 28 and 16, respectively, after these new findings. The smallest of these moons, orbiting Uranus, is only five miles in diameter and takes 680 days to complete an orbit. Neptune's new moons vary in brightness and size, with orbits ranging from 9 to 27 years. Astronomers used layered exposures to reveal these moons against the backdrop of stars and galaxies. These moons have likely been gravitating around their planets since the early days of the solar system. Well, this might complete the list of moons down to sizes of five to eight miles for Uranus and Neptune. The search continues for even smaller satellites. And in entertainment news, Dune, part two, led the US box office to its best weekend of the year with $81.5 million in sales. This success pushed the domestic box office past the $100 million mark for the first time since January. 2024's overall box office sales, previously lagging behind 2023 by 20%, have now improved. The sequel's timing proved advantageous, filling a void for movie theaters seeking a box office boost. IMAX reported record sales from Dune, part two, highlighting the film's broad appeal. The movie, based on Frank Herbert's novel, explores themes of war, betrayal, and survival on a desert planet. Despite challenges, including a previous controversial simultaneous release strategy, the sequel has performed well. The decision to delay its release due to the actor's strike allowed for effective promotion, enhancing its success. Overall, the weekend saw a total gross of $112 million across all movies, setting a high for the year. Well, alrighty folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, in honor of Bitcoin going bonkers again, here's a quote about it from Nobel Peace Prize nominee, Leon Liu. Every informed person needs to know about Bitcoin because it might be one of the world's most important developments. And it just might be. And that's a wrap for this morning. Remember to stay tuned tomorrow for more news and updates. Have an amazing day, my good friends. <laughs>